It's critically important for you to understand the importance of LiPo storage and charging physical protection. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the ways you can protect yourself and your property. Lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries are one of the key technologies that enabled the growth of electric RC modeling, whether RC airplanes or cars. Their lightweight and high power density make them most modelers' choice in powering their electric models. In this video, we're going to take a look at the physical barriers you should consider when storing, transporting, and charging your LiPo batteries to avoid becoming an accident statistic. Unfortunately, there are too many instances of LiPo accidents that have resulted in the loss of cars, workshops, homes, yes, and even lives. I'm not trying to fearmonger here. The fact is there are millions of flights and races run each year using LiPo batteries. When treated according to the manufacturer's recommendation, they're quite safe. When they fail, however, they can be dangerous. Physical barriers are one of the ways that you can keep a charging error or LiPo failure from setting your property on fire. When charged or discharged, LiPo batteries are pretty stable and safe. It's when they're damaged or when they're being charged that most incidents happen. For example, I have a flying buddy who spent several months living away from his house while it was being repaired after a workshop LiPo fire. As they say, stuff happens. For more detailed information on battery care and safe charging practices, consider my book, RC Ground School. It's available on Amazon.com in both Kindle and paperback formats. For now, let's take a look at physical barriers. Let's take a look at some of the common physical barrier solutions that you'll see uh, around the flying field or you may want to consider for your home or workshop. Remember, there are really three things that you're trying to protect yourself from. First is the flame or the fire that might come from a battery that's bursting. Two is the hot gases that uh, are very hot and full of soot. And then three would be the pressure that all that forms if it were to go up in a sealed container. So those are the three considerations that you're going to want to keep in mind when choosing a battery physical barrier uh, solution that best meets your needs. Now one of the first ones that I used was just this fireproof box. I got it at a Walmart or a Staple and it's just an insulated box and you could put your batteries in here it closes down. It has a lock that I kept on my keychain. You could lock it up. And interestingly enough, it had just a little bit of give uh, with the looseness of the lock, which made me suspect how well it would work to keep valuable papers safe in a fire. Uh, but for a battery selection or a battery protection, that would not be such a bad thing because if the battery were to go up, you'd keep the hot gases and flame in the insulated box and the fact that it could rise just a little would allow some of the pressure to dissipate. So this is one of the things you may want to consider. It doesn't really help for charging, however, because you would you know, run the risk of shorting the wires if you were trying to run wires through, which would mean some surgery. I've seen them done where you cut a little hole in it, put a grommet in, which would allow the battery to go in, would provide pretty good protection, but you'd still end up with a fair amount of soot and gas coming out the grommet hole. Uh, in some cases, people would actually put in spark arresters that you might find for a chainsaw or some other kind of piece of lawn equipment uh, in the, either in the top or in the sides to provide venting and while at the same time to keep the uh, flames in the box. So if you've got small batteries, a number of you know 2200 and smaller two and three cell batteries, uh, you're flying at the park, this might be the kind of solution you might want to consider. Again, flame, soot, and pressure are what we're dealing with, and this would help deal with most of those. Now, another one of the really common 
uh, solutions that you'll see is using an ammo box. You can get these at Costco or Walmart for you know 20 bucks for a pair or if you're in a large enough town or city that you have a military surplus store you can get some old military surplus which is what this one was. I took a wire brush to it, scraped away the surface rust, uh, painted the inside of it kind of a glossy white, painted the outside blue and I've got a nice um, box to store my batteries. Now, there's a couple of drawbacks to this that you need to be aware of before you just get it and start using it. One is that here on the lid is a gasket, which means that it seals really tight. Now that's great for keeping water out of bullets, but it's not so good because you're going to end up, if a battery were to explode in here while this was set down tight, you'd end up uh, possibly rupturing one of the welds or one of the seals here, causing kind of an explosive uh, venting of the pressure that was in the box. And so there are a couple of ways that you can deal with that. One, remove the gasket. By removing the gasket, you get a pretty nice seal on the top, but there's going to be enough room in the lid, enough give, kind of like that black uh, fireproof box that would allow the smoke to come out of the edges of the box, which would help alleviate the pressure before you ran the risk of, of rupturing the box itself. In my case, what I chose to do is I just took a drill and I put a couple of holes in the top, which accomplishes the same thing. So if there were a battery to, were to rupture here inside the box, you'd end up with fumes shooting out of these two little holes, but it, the goal would be to keep the flame and most of the hot gas in the box uh, while not overpressurizing the box. Now, an ammo box has the same problem that the black fireproof box did in that you really can't charge in it. You'd have to drill larger holes, put grommets in it, that kind of thing to get your charge wires into the box. Otherwise, um, these provide good transport and that's what I primarily use them for, uh, but you wouldn't want to put your charging wires through the lid uh, because you run the risk of uh, stripping off the uh, insulation and, and shorting the wires on the metal box itself. So it's a good storage solution. It's not a good charging solution unless you're going to do a little bit of surgery on the box to give yourself better access for your charge leads. The next common solution that you often see are these LiPo safe bags. They're made of a fireproof material. They have a Velcro top where you can put the battery in the, the bag and then what you're able to do is where these fold over there's a little little space right there and there you can get your charge leads and your balance tap to the battery while it's inside the bag. Now if you've watched some YouTube videos of tests of these things you can see that they're really pretty effective especially on small to medium sized batteries. They puff up, they blow up like a balloon, the smoke vents out of the top um, but most of the hot flame and gases stay within the bag and so it's a pretty good uh, charge protection and of course you can use them to transport your batteries also. The downside to this is with larger batteries um, you, you run the risk of a large powerful battery just blowing right through the bag. Um, burning a hole through it and now you've got the flame and the smoke and the soot and all of that uh, right around where you're charging and so you're still going to want to charge um, a battery away from other combustible materials and you still run the risk of these um, rupturing. As you can see they come in a variety of sizes. You could do a couple of batteries or a larger battery in here. Uh, this is another brand. It just doesn't have the aluminum coating on it, but it works the same. Uh, and so LiPo sacks or LiPo safe bags are one of the things you might want to consider, especially if you're primarily flying uh, small to medium sized batteries to always charge, almost always charge in, um, in a LiPo sack away from combustible materials, uh, but to give a little added protection to my charger and uh, and the other things that are close by when I do charge. Now my newest battery uh, safety device is what's called the BatSafe. I haven't had this very long, I've just gotten it set up, uh, but this one provides the same kind of protection that either of the two other box solutions uh, provide you, plus it provides the opportunity to safely vent, collect soot, and 
still with this little wire keeper here, allow you to um, insert your um, charge tap or your charge leads and your balance taps into the box where the charging is going to happen. So this one works well for charging and for transport. The way this works is that you've got uh, two steel boxes with insulation around the edge to keep the heat in the box. And in the top of the box, you can see you've got a lot of holes right here corresponding to the holes on the top of the box. And in between, there's a mesh of fiberglass and uh, steel uh, screen material that is the, um, the spark arresting and soot removal system for the, the bat safe. So if you were to be charging, have a battery rupture, the bat safe would pressurize, the smoke would start to come out through these holes in the lid, but the soot and the flame would stay in the box and just some of the, uh, the white fumes and smoke would come out, meaning that it would be a lot cooler and it would be a lot cleaner so that you don't have a huge mess to clean up in your workshop uh, tracking down all the soot that would come from uh, a battery fire. These work pretty cool. You have the uh, uh, charge leads and balance taps work through this little wire keeper here. Um, and then when you close it down, connect it. Since I have a pair of each, you know, uh, going in, I've got them labeled so I don't inadvertently um, uh, connect one ch charge lead to one charger and then um, the battery charge or the balance taps to another. Um, that would uh, kind of defeat the whole purpose of the safety of having a balance tap if they weren't connected to the same charging circuitry. And so uh, I'm really anxious to start using this. It provides a level of protection uh, beyond uh, either of the other two boxes that I described. There are, of course, a number of combination things that you can do. For example, a number of folks uh, might use one of the um, charge bags like this one uh, and then put it inside a, uh, the cavity of a cinder block. If you've got the cinder block sitting on concrete or having it sitting on a piece of tile, you've got fireproof uh, concrete all around it. You've got a way to keep some of the smoke and flame in the bag and then place the um, the bag in that cavity of the cinder block provides you another level of protection. Some people even go so far as to put a small plastic bag of sand on top of the opening of the cinder block. In that way, if the battery were to erupt, the plastic would melt, the sand would fall into the cavity and uh, uh, keep the fire in the, in the uh, cavity and in some cases may even put out the fire itself. So there are a lot of things that you're going to see and read. Here are some of the common ones that you'll want to consider to make sure that you're charging your battery safely. Physical barriers, along with following the manufacturer's recommended practices when charging, are the two most important things you can do to protect yourself from a LiPo battery incident or accident. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If so, please click the thumbs up button for the video and please subscribe to the rcplaneviews.com channel to be notified when I post new videos.